Hi everybody, welcome back to my channel. This is a requested video on how I cook up the Aldi gyro kit on my electric griddle. So we're gonna use this gyro kit from Aldi. It's from the Bremer brand, of all, one of Aldi's brands. And you're gonna use an onion, which is optional, and also lettuce is optional. We're just gonna use bag lettuce because we're gonna cheat a little bit. And here we go. Um, this is sort of a, my hack for when um, people with disabilities cooking or limitations. Um, I have an electric griddle. I also have an air fryer. I have a George Foreman grill and um, something else. Just it's, it's eluding me right now that I sometimes bring to the kitchen table to cook. Um, actually, I think it's just those three. Um, and it just helps. Uh, the electric griddle especially. Pancakes, bacon, waffle, not waffles. Oh, the waffle iron. That was the other thing. <laughs> Pancakes hamburgers uh you can do anything that you can grill or fry on the stove you can make on your electric griddle okay so while i'm prepping my veggies um when i grew up in new york we had gyros all the time and or gyros or gyros it depends on where you're from and what ethnicity people have there that actually call it what they call it so i know it's technical uh the greek translation is hero there's like an h sound um, which is probably where we get hero from, but that's a whole nother story. Um, traditionally, they're served with onions, lettuce, tomato, and tzatziki sauce. Now, there are some places that serve it with red sauce. There's some people, places that you can get feta cheese and black olives. But in New York, where we grew up, that's how we always ate them. Um, we, uh, I'm the only one in the house who eats tomatoes, so we don't traditionally have, not traditionally, we don't typically have tomatoes at the house. So, um... I don't have a tomato here, but normally I would cut a tomato in wedges if I was going to have tomato on it, because that's how you get it at the at the Greek place by me. You get the tomato wedges, little ones, not like quarters, like sixteenth wedges. And then with lettuce, so I just opened a bag of salad and I chopped onion slices. So you do like little thin onion strings, okay? So it's important for if you follow the directions on the gyro kit to defrost everything uh, put it in the refrigerator the night before or um, there's instructions on how to the best way to defrost it we forgot to so what i do is i learned from good eats alton brown has um, you defrost it in running cool water it's the best way to defrost the meat and the pita breads um, they defrost really easy and if and if you are making them very quickly, just lay them out on paper towels separate from each other and they'll defrost even faster. And the tzatziki sauce you can also run in the cooling cool water, that's what we did. We basically flood the sink and have the two of them running slowly and then every once in a while we go and we plug some water out of the sink and then just continue to let the cold water trickle, trickle in there. Um, so I have the griddle on high and um, I showed you I have a Dollar Tree tortilla holder, which is what I usually use when I'm making tortillas or making the gyros because it keeps, um, even when I do these on the frying pan at the stove, I can only do one at a time. On the griddle, at least I could do two at a time. So I use this tortilla maker, to, uh, tortilla holder to keep them warm as I make the rest. And it's the directions on the box are to spray them each with, um, not spray them each, but coat them with olive oil. Um, and then toast them, and that's what we're doing here. Um, I just use a pair of tongs. I use the olive oil spray from Aldi. Um, this is an, and this is a green salad from Aldi. This is like an Aldi only meal right now. <laughs> um, I'm sure I got my onions from Aldi as well. Um, so this actually does take a few minutes, especially when you first turn the grill on. If you don't know exactly if it's at the temperature just yet. But once they start to go, they really get going. And I do all of this on high. I cook the meat on high. I cook the tortillas on high. The tortillas. The pita bread. Um, and then uh, the meat does give off quite a bit of grease. So I keep my, um, when I'm grilling, griddling, I keep a rubber spoonula by so that I could scrape the grease into that little well. You know, there's a little well down there. Um, it is angled properly for most of the grease to run off. However, I have to actually angle it level most of the time so that all the food doesn't run off. Like when I scramble eggs on it, I'm, I put something under the front two feet so that all the eggs don't run into the, into the grease well, if that makes sense. So you see how fast that goes? Um, 
my griddle, that left side or my left side, actually cooks a tiny bit faster. It's at the end of the elements. Um, so you'll see they get nice and toasty like that, and that's when you know they're done. What I do to earmark that they're finished is that the, the cooking spray oil stops being shiny. Then I know that I've toasted it enough, and I'm not left with any raw olive oil flavor. Um, which, not that raw olive oil is terrible, but it's if it's not good olive oil, it could be, you know, eh. <laughs> so that's all I'm doing is just move them around. It only takes a few minutes per side. Um, I think this whole meal is less than a half an hour. Um, I do believe we took 30 minutes to defrost everything and then a half an hour to cook it. So this whole meal from start to finish was just an hour. Um, so there's my chopped onion and my shredded lettuce. Um, and now tzatziki sauce. If you want to make homemade tzatziki sauce, it is awesome to home make. Um, it's plain Greek yogurt, and then what you do is I like to take, I mean, everybody's got different recipes, but I like to take my box grater, and I do is I take a, depending on how much I'm making, I'll take like a half a cucumber and take the seeds out. So I cut it long ways, peel it, let me start over. I take a half a cucumber, I peel it, I cut it half ways, and then I cut it halfway long way, so I have a quarter of a cucumber. I scoop out the seeds, that's important, and I take it to the box grater and I grate it um, over a, a tea towel lined sieve, like a colander. And the reason you do this is if you just grate cucumber into your yogurt, it'll be like so watery, you won't even imagine. So you really have to wring out your cucumber for your tzatziki sauce the best you can. Now, there are some people who grate onion in there to add a little onion. Some have dill. Some tzatziki sauces have dill. Some have lemon. Um, but you can get away with just cucumber and, um, and yogurt and plain yogurt. That's important, plain Greek yogurt. Um, but this comes with it, so you don't need to do it. And actually, they call it gyro sauce, which really helps because you try to pronounce tzatziki sauce. If you're ever looking for it, it begins with a T and then a Z. <laughs> so, um, hopefully, I, I, I often wonder, do I do my Greek grandfather proud to, to use words that at least have sort of the same, I don't know, how they're supposed to sound a little bit. So now I'm starting with the meat. Now, they give you enough for six slices of meat per gyro. There's at least 30 slices of meat that we're going to cook. And the meat cooks really quickly. So keep that in mind when you're preparing the rest of your meal or planning the rest of your meal. Um, and you're going to be able to see here, this is only at not even two times speed. It's like one and uh, I feel like it's like, two. I reduced it by like 20% or something. So it's, it's going a little faster than real time, but not much is what I'm trying to say. And you can tell by the chipmunks in the back. If we were going at two times speed, you wouldn't be able to understand what we're saying. So then you just turn them. You throw them on the griddle. You turn them, and you can watch them cook here. And then I just keep it going. I just keep, like, when those two are done, I put them on the plate. When the next two are done, you know, like, and then replace them. Now, they do let off a lot of grease. You can put these on a paper towel. But they do drain pretty well to the bottom of the plate. It's just that the last few will be sitting in grease. And that is not always the worst thing it's not horrible it's not horrible grease either it's flavored I know that that sounds dumb don't eat it but <laughs> but I'm just saying if it got on if it gets the last two are soggy you can't tell well the last two are greasy they don't get soggy and you can't really feel greasy is what I was trying to say all right so you see how well they're cooking and they cook really quickly and then um you just switch them out so like I said um mom started to come to eat and she forgot she was supposed to take six slices, and she only took four. So there's lots of meat left over. But they do give you, like, I feel like there's, like, what would we say, Jim, like 32, 33? Yeah, there's always a little extra meat anyway. Um, but they make it, the serving suggestion is six slices of meat. So, and that's a plenty of meat, to be honest with you. These are real thin slices. When you go to an actual Greek place that has the spit of lamb, um, or gyro meat because it's lamb plus, um, then you'll, you get like these slices that are flat on one side and sort of triangular on the other at times. 
and those are a lot thicker. So you don't get six slices when you go to the giant, the, the Greek restaurant or to Greek fair or something. But um, the gyro kit from Aldi, they have them nice and thin, so they do cook up really quickly. And like, uh, you know, we talk about the Greek restaurant as well. So if I bet uh, $2 for this bag of salad, and I probably, if I gave 50 cents to an onion, that'd be a lot. I don't have a whole onion there, but I'm saying. So the gyro kit is six ninety nine, a dollar for the lettuce, dollar for the onion even. So for $9, we're getting five gyros. And if you've bought, bought one in a restaurant someplace, you know that you can't get one for less than $3. So um, getting five gyros for $9 is a great deal as well. And it, you, as you can see, it doesn't take a lot of effort. Jim's making his over there on the corner. Can't wait for me. <laughs> He's like, I ain't waiting. Nah. -uh. <laughs> That's okay. I don't mind, actually. I, I prefer... I eat faster than my family. Um, it's sort of a family tradition in my, in, you know, my brothers and sisters growing up. Um, but, uh, so I don't mind that they get started before me. <laughs> but then again, when it comes to gyros, I don't think Jim eats slower than me. I think he's going to polish this one off before I'm done cooking, if, I, if my memory serves. <laughs> so now that I just have the last few pieces of meat on there. Oh, not yet. I'm making room. Making room for more. Yeah, it does go very quickly. It's very delicious. I don't think that it's necessarily the healthiest for you, but I, in my family, my adults are like, can be like children sometimes, and it's like you have to sneak the vegetables in. So if you can have taco night, where they're adding lettuce and onions, or you have gyro night where they're adding lettuce and onions, <laughs> that is definitely... Um, a plus. So that's another way uh, if you have, you know, young children or picky eaters to sneak some, some vegetables in their diet. A gyro is the way to go. And I think we're just about done. I think I got two more slices over there waiting for two more to come off. And this meat isn't raw. Um, it is pre-cooked uh, before it's sliced, um, like a roast, almost like a meatloaf. Um, so raw food handling, um, I don't believe is uh, necessary. Yeah, necessary. I don't think that. Um, but follow the box for directions for that, okay? But you can also microwave this, by the way. So um, they have microwave directions for the pita bread and the gyro meat. Um, so if you are just cooking for yourself or if you're really on limited time, then you can go ahead and follow those directions. We've also baked it in the oven. We've done that as well. Um, so they can get the whole kit done at the same time. Um, Oh, we're talking about the wildlife. There's a new show on TLC called The Wildlife. And this lady has what she says. She said three human babies and 50 fur babies. She's got like a little uh, rescue animal habitat. It's kind of fun. But anyhow, um, that's it. So you can see me scooping the grease up with the rubber spoonula into the grease trap. So what I do when I cook at the table, my electric grill it, griddle, is I um, turn it off and then unplug it. I unplug it from the wall, and I unplug it from the machine. Now, if you've never worked with an electric griddle before, the probe that goes into your electric griddle is still hot when you pull it out. So just make sure, be mindful of where you place it. Um, at Christmas time, I wasn't mindful, and I placed it on my vinyl tablecloth and burnt it a little bit. But that's it. So then I take that to the, sto to the sink, and I do like a hibachi grill thing where I use a hot, wet dish towel, and I wipe it down. So now I'm going to show you how to assemble it. I like to make mine aluminum foil. It makes me feel right at home. <laughs> but on a piece of foil, I put the pita bread. I stack the six slices of meat in one direction. And then my lettuce and onion. No particular order. And then I like to top mine with the tzatziki sauce. But I also like to put a little on my plate for dipping. Because I love it so much. Yep, that's me stirring it up. 
they opened it and they started eating it and they never actually stirred it. But the recommendation is to stir it when you open it. <laughs> but they just dug right in, so. And then I just wrap up the bottom and it makes me feel like I'm at Pete's Pizzeria. Hey, Leo. And that's everything, guys. I hope you really enjoyed this tutorial. If you do, give it a thumbs up. If you have any questions at all, leave them in the comments down below. Don't forget to share this with friends and family or anybody who might be interested in, <laughs> in seeing um, how to make these. And if you haven't yet, click subscribe. And when you do, a little bell will pop up. When you ring that bell, YouTube will let you know whenever we upload a new video. And as always, take care. God bless. See you next time. Bye. Look at all the napkins. <laughs>